It's time to do a recreational tear down of a lamp because this thing that I'm currently reverse engineering is proving to be quite complex and irritating to reverse engineer due to its custom chips, which doesn't make things easy. No sign of them. You type the numbers in the internet and it literally comes up with two random results. It's not very good. However, this is what we shall take a look at instead. This is a quick doodle I did in the front to show what's in it. And I'm going to warn you in advance, this is flickery. That's partly why I want to take it to bits. Now, let me grab a lamp holder and I'll show you this. So here's the lamp holder and we'll test its power. I'm going to guess its power is going to be in the region of 2 watts because it is the using the 1 watt filament. So let's bring the, the happy up. So I'll plug the flickery hoppy in and then it will get competition of something else that will flicker. I'll just put this back in its bag as something has tried to sneak into shot there. So I'm going to warn you in advance, this is going to flicker. I know it's going to flicker because I've seen it and it flickers. Oh, it's not showing up in the camera as being flickery. That's interesting. Uh, to the naked eye, yes, it, it strobes, but that's not bad. It's not flickering on camera. Uh, 1.9 watts, so close enough. 16 milliamps, 0.4 power factor. Typical sort of things. Looking up the end of the lamp, I was hoping to see the usual circuitry, a little round circuit board, but there's not. There's a bit of heat shrink sleeving in there, which partly explains the flickering, because there's a tiny, tiny circuit board in it. Get this out of the way. And that probably means it's going to be a tiny little ceramic capacitor and a bridge rectifier, and if we're very lucky, an uh, inrush limiting resistor and no smoothing. So the only way to open this, because it's the lamp cement, uh, it's not likely to come off easily without breaking the glass. This is soldered, so I'm just going to nibble my way in. Kiss goodbye to this lamp. It's it's about to meet its maker in the name of science. So let's see if I can do this without cutting into myself. So the way I usually get into these is I will peel the metal away. And this is where the Edison screw wins over the bayonet cap holders, because the bayonet cap ones are so much harder to open for some reason. Well, they're smooth for a start. There's nothing to get a grip on. Here's the circuit board. There is a circuit board with what looks like a ceramic baster on it. I will draw out the schematic. It's not going to take long. I wonder if it's got any inrush limiting at all, because that would be annoying if it doesn't. Right, tell you what, where's my sneaky little side cutters? And I'll get in there and cut that wire. I've missed the wire. I think I've missed the wire. Yes, I have. It is cut. Behold, uh, there is the circuit board. Just bend that metal out the way here. There's the other wire going down to where it solders on. And that means that I can now, theoretically, just bend these wires in and get this cover off. Oh, yeah. Where's the bridge rectifier? The bridge rectifier is on the back. The uh, capacitor is in the front. There's a discharge resistor across the capacitor. Right, tell you what, where's the notepad? This isn't going to take too long. On a plus note, it's so simple that if that... Uh, Resistor value doesn't mess things up too much. I should be able to measure the value of that capacitor. I'm going to guess it's 470 nanofarad. Let's put this to the 2 microfarad setting. And then go across this capacitor. Two hundred and sixty, but is that an accurate value? Because uh, it does have the discharge resistor across it. It actually, it probably is an accurate value. 260. That's an odd value. Let's say a typical value might be 270 nanofarad for that. Hmm. Okay. On one hand, it's lower than I was expecting, but then again, it's quite a low current going through this, right? Tell you what. Where is my magnifying glass to see that resistor, which has a value of 304. That's 30 and... Or zero, something is just avalanche, that's okay. Um, so that's 300k. And on the back is just a bridge rectifier. Righty-ho. Anything else there?
Oh, there is a little damper resistor on the other side of it. 204, which is uh, 200k, and that's just kind of pointless, really. That's uh, the one that's just designed to damp it slightly so it doesn't glow. I suppose it is helpful to stop it glowing. This is that horrible uh, dark glass that when you try sweeping it off the bench, it will cut me. Now I'm just going to sweep it with my notepad to the side, and then I shall vacuum that up safely later. Let's draw the schematic. So I'll zoom out just a tiny bit for this, but not too much. We've got live. We've got neutral. We've got that capacitor, which was about 270 nanofarad. Um, not sure the voltage rate will be. Always a bit concerned about those tiny, tiny little ceramic capacitors because they're so small. But this one is a fairly decent size, and I do know they make them in fairly high voltage uh, forms. Sometimes to get the voltage, they actually have... Uh, if these are the plates at one side, they'll actually bridge them with a central plate and then more plates with those connected to either side. And that puts effectively two capacitors in series, but increases the voltage rating. But anyway, we have that and we've got a discharge resistor. Was that 400k, I said? See, I've distracted myself. 300k, which is an odd value. 300k. And that's a discharge resistor, so you don't get a tingle when you touch the back of the pins. The other connection will be going to the bridge rectifier. At least it's rectified. Could have been so much worse, but uh, having said that, in this case, it would kind of only really work with that if they did this. And then the output is going to those filaments. I'll just draw them as just a couple of big LEDs, but in reality, each one of those filaments will have quite a voltage drop across it. Potentially they could have 30 chips and that would be, say, 90 volts across each one. Just a guess. Or it might be lower. Uh, but that would suit the UK supply. There is no real inrush limiting. When you, particularly if you put this in a dimmer, which is probably not great, although they probably describe it as dimmable knowing them, uh, it means that as the when the dimmer switches on, you've got a pulse of current that goes through the LEDs. But there is also that other resistor which I think was 200. Okay, I'm going to have to remind myself of that one again. Cross the bridge rectifier. Yes, 200k. And the purpose of this one is just to put a slight load on so that uh, if you've got leakage through the, the switch wiring, capacitor leakage, it doesn't make the LEDs just glow a little bit. Uh, that's it. Um... It's just capacitive dropper, rectifier, absolutely no smoothing. The smooth, smoothing would have been nice here, and there's loads of room in here for it, but maybe they did it for reliability and just say, well, nobody really minds them flickering. I mind them flickering. It's annoying. It continually stimulates the peripheral vision out the side of your, your, your eyes, and uh, it can be quite irritating. It keeps your brain alert, so to speak, which isn't necessarily a great thing. But that is it. It's a very simple lamp much easier to analyse than this thing, which I'll work on. It's weird. Uh, uh, and I suppose ultimately it's quite stylish. It's, they've actually made it using traditional lamp manufacturing means with the do, do met or do me metal, the sort of like the metal that's designed to match the sort of pinch seal. Uh, and also they've got nice solid uh, stems in here that they've spot welded the filament onto. And they've spot melded a extension onto this so they can use this as a standard base. Quite interesting. So actually, quite a neat lamp. It's just a shame that they didn't go that one step further and add a bit of smoothing just to get rid of the flicker. But quite nice nonetheless.